Hello and welcome to this course on MATLAB programming for numerical computations. In this week, we are covering how to write MATLAB codes and MATLAB functions in order to solve numerical problems of interest to scientists and engineers. These good programming practices are very essential to follow in academics as well. Okay, there are several reasons for that. The first reason is a better written code is usually easier to debug. The second reason is that the better written code is going to be more efficient and you will take less amount of computational time to run that code. But the third I think in my personal opinion is the most important reason. But if you follow certain good programming practices then even if you come back to your code maybe one or two years later you can very well understand what each and individual parts of the code were intended to do. Okay. So, these are the three reasons why I want to cover uh, this particular topic writing better MATLAB functions in this lecture. Okay. So, let me recap what we did in the first lecture of previous week. This is an example of code snippet from the example of Dhoni hitting a 6. Okay. So, what are the three, three blocks? We have the input block, we have the computation block and we have the exit block. Now, what does it mean when we write codes in MATLAB? sorry when we write function in, in MATLAB this was an example of a script but the same idea we can follow in writing functions as well. In this particular example the input block contains the definition of the parameters, the computation block contains nothing but com computing the value of phi. There is no exit block over here because this is a relatively simple uh, function. Okay. What if you are passing on parameters at, as we did in the previous video? As we did in the previous video, if you are passing on the parameter, the input block becomes very simple. Only the function definition goes in the input block. The computation block is also straightforward because you are doing the computation of phi and there is no exit block because there is no other pre-processing, uh, sorry, there are no other post-processing things that are required in this particular code and your code is fairly straightforward. Okay. So, this is what I, I recommend that whenever you are writing your code, it is a good idea to split the code into the input, computation and exit blocks. Okay. Now, just a bonus, okay. you can the entire thing that we have done, the entire function file that we have written over here, you can very well write the same thing as a command line declaration of this particular form. I do not recommend uh, beginners to use this particular way of writing the code. If you are intermediate or advanced user, of course, you can use this command line uh, declaration. By the time you come to the end of this course, you might be able to become familiar with using this command line declarations. But right now, as you are beginning to learn MATLAB, I would recommend that you stick to either this or this way of writing functions. Okay? Now, let me spend a couple of minutes talking to you about the functions and about what, what is known as the anonymous functions and how to call these functions. Okay? Now, in MATLAB provides a new slash improved way. I will not call it new, but I will call it an improved way of calling functions. Okay. We had defined polyfun as a function with two input arguments, okay. first input argument and the second input argument. The first input argument was we know physically we know this as temperature, the second input argument physically we know that as a structure of parameters. Okay. So, those are what were the two par parameters. Okay. Now, let us say that we want to call polyfun okay, and somebody expects one variable to, uh, to be assigned to polyfun okay, as was the case in the integral function. So, this is how we will write okay. 
okay now what does this mean what this means is that matlab will compare these two names okay if t is written over here matlab will compare where t is existing over here okay what that means is anywhere that t is referred to okay implies that this particular element will be replaced internally with t okay whatever the variable is there defined in var name in the current workspace that variable will directly be passed on to this in polyfun okay so when we said at t this structure param was passed on into the function polyfun so this is kind of how this works okay this is niket that's me this is my friend polyfun okay our teacher has given us certain assignments a teacher has given me one assignment teacher has given my friend polyfun another assignment okay now i have a certain set of instructions that i need to follow polyfun has certain set of instructions that he or she needs to follow okay now we have been instructed that i cannot show my set of instructions or my worksheet to polyfun polyfun cannot show his or her worksheet to me so we have created a wall between the two of us so i cannot see what polyfun is doing polyfun cannot see what i am doing okay now i want certain information from polyfun okay i want fee from polyfun okay i don't know how polyfun is going to give me that fee but i want the value fee from polyfun okay now polyfun tells me okay give me two variables okay first variable is something another next variable is something else okay so give me two variables okay so what i do is i will take a piece of paper i will take let's say a post it okay i will take post it and i will say the first variable is 300 the second variable is a structure with dot alpha equal to 1 dot beta equal to 0.5 dot gamma equal to 0.002 again the values don't really matter okay so this is something that i have written in a sheet of paper polyfun doesn't know anything about it what i then do is i pass on this sheet of paper to polyfun okay polyfun reads this number 300 reads this structure struct sorry this structure param okay polyfun does not know that the t was t or t was called param polyfun only gets this chit okay now what does polyfun do okay wherever t is being used polyfun is going to use the number 300 in place of that t wherever that parameter structure is used it will use these three values as alpha beta and gamma of uh, fields of that parameter okay it gets these instructions where it does alpha plus beta into t plus gamma into t squared it has no idea what alpha is no idea what beta is no idea what gamma is no idea what t is it just follows these instructions blindly once it follows these instructions it gets a particular value that value the polyfun writes it in another chit okay in a different chit polyfun writes that value of gamma uh, sorry that value of phi and let's say that value of phi turns out to be 151 let's say 152.2 okay it takes this and gives this chit back to me now i get this chit with just one number i have no idea what polyfun has done i just get this particular chit 
all the variables that polyfun has used i do not have access to it all the variables that i have used polyfun does not have access to it the only thing from me that polyfun gets is that particular particular piece of paper with 300 something dot alpha something dot beta something dot gamma it does all the computations polyfun does all his or her computations using the instructions gives gets a value of 152.2 i have no idea how polyfun has done this i only get this value 152.2 returned back to me okay when i get 152.2 returned back to me i do whatever computations that i need to do and i am happy doing doing this okay next time i want to call polyfun next time maybe i will call polyfun with a value of 320 okay with the same value alpha beta and gamma i will again pass this chit Polyfun does all of this computation. Polyfun gives me a back back the value of uh, you know 164. Okay, I use that value 164 to do my set of calculations. Thereafter, I decide the value that I have to pass on to Polyfun. I take one more chit, write 340 something dot alpha something dot beta something dot gamma, pass it back to Polyfun. We keep doing that every time I call Polyfun. I'm calling Polyfun. Hey Polyfun, here is my chit. Polyfun is hey Niket, here is your answer. Okay. So with that almost three four minutes segue into how functions work, let us get back to our discussion about how to write better codes. Okay. So the good programming practices. Let's talk about this particular function versus a function written over here. So, in this case, our phi had a simple way, it was 1 plus 0 0.2 t plus 0 0.005 t squared. Okay? So, I can very easily put this directly over here, okay? but usually this is not a very good recommended practice. The reason is that 1 is it is prone to error, 2 is these parameters could change at some point of time by separating out the input block or the definition block and the computation block you reduce the chances of making this errors okay so always i will recommend between the option number 1 and option number 2 i will always recommend the option number 1 okay now what about these two cases okay i think both of these are equivalent but as i had said in uh, a few minutes earlier, avoid unless you are testing coding alternatives and you are an intermediate user at least. So, you might be able to use this particular construct by the time you come to week number 5 or 6 in this course, but I would want you to avoid this particular way of coding at least initially. Okay? What is the third way of coding? The third way of coding was using phi equal to this by passing on the parameter as one of the variable or input arguments. Okay? Now, this depends on individual situation. For example, if you want to do this for one particular type of problems, this the left hand side method is what you will use. But now, where is this particular th thing used? Okay? So, phi can be for example, your specific heat. So, specific heat can, can be represented as a polynomial function or temperature okay? or it could be your resistance, electrical resistance okay? or it could be your Young's modulus okay? or it could be various different other physical properties. Uh, Let us say you have uh, steel, titanium uh, and silicon as, as three conducting uh, or semiconducting material. The resistances of these three, the alpha, beta and gamma values for the resistances will be different for each of these materials. Now, if you want to write a code for these materials, okay, you will write one single function poly phi and you will have param steel param silicon param titanium as three 
uh, uh, three structures. You call this particular function with param steel, you will get the resistance of steel. Uh, you call this with param silicon, you will get the resistivity, for example, of silicon. If you call it with param Ti, you will get the resistivity of titanium. Okay? So, you can do this using one single code but different param values in your MATLAB script and calling the same function three different times with the same temperature but different param values. So, this is the use case when you will use a coding like this. So, between these two options, I am not specifying whether you should do this or this, it will depend on case to case basis. And for this course, this particular method of writing is going to be sufficient for a lot of examples, but we might actually end up using both ways of writing the code. Okay? What are the other good practices? The other good practices is if you have a super li long line of code, it is actually difficult to catch error in a code like this. So, let us say you have R that is defined in this particular form, then instead of writing a code like this, might be better to write a code like this. I do not know how many of you have noticed, but this was an error that I had made. This is not an error that I am making up just for the sake of this video. It so happened that I had actually made that error while writing this, this snippet of the code. So, I thought it would be a good idea to retain that error when I am demonstrating it. I actually caught this error indeed while I was writing the numerator over here. Okay? It is just a coincidence, it need not always happen. But if this happens, it will be easier to catch, catch uh, the errors if you are writing shorter lines. Okay? My rule of thumb is that the line should not be longer than 60 to 80 characters. Okay? The next piece of advice that I am going to give you is to use array operations as much as possible. Okay? So, instead of writing your code in, or instead of writing this particular guy in this manner, it might be a better idea to write it in this particular manner. And again, we have gone over that a couple of videos earlier as well as in the previous lecture. Uh, you can pause this video and go over it more carefully to try to understand what I am doing over here. It is something that we have spoken about earlier. The final uh, uh, suggestion that I have is comment comment a lot as many comments as you as you want you should you should feel free to put so many comments for example the comment over here is this is numerator of r this is square of the denominator of r so numerator divided by den square root is going to be equal to r okay this makes your code readable so that if anybody looks at that code they exactly know what is happening 